Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. So Allah Khan here and today I will just have one example. So I know that you are bored with these numerical problem things uh, but the thing is these are important. These are you know they, they, they have a little bit of a practical importance. So don't get bored with it please just uh, uh, you know let it be the last. Let this one be the last. So let down, write down the question please, example only one we'll discuss today. So a factory load consists of what it is given comprises of the following. So A is an induction motor, A is an induction motor rated at 100 bhps and then what do you have having an efficiency of 85% having an efficiency of 85% operating at a power factor of 0.75 lagging power factor of 0.75 lagging right okay the second load is what this is a synchronous motor rated at 50 bhps and the efficiency is 95% with a power factor of 0.8 leading power factor is 0.8 leading C load is lightning and miscellaneous loads. So I will write miscellaneous loads amounting to 12.5 kilowatts operated at a demand factor. FD is the demand factor which is 80% and the power factor is of course a unit. Fine? Yes. Now it is given that the factory works for 2000 hours per year. So time I will write is 2000 hours per year and is charged with a two part tariff. Tariff is what? Tariff is rupees 3000 per kVA, 3000 per kVA of the maximum demand plus rupees 20 per kilowatt hour. Fine? Yes. Now find the annual cost of the electricity for the factory operating at full load so the annual cost is unknown so this is part a for the question annual cost is unknown at these conditions in part number b recalculate the cost of electricity when the synchronous motor is excited to operate on 0.9 leading and then on 0.7 leading in point B, you would adjust it to 0.9 leading and in, in, in point C, you would adjust it to 0.7 leading for the synchronous motor. So what do you have is, what do you have? Have a look, you need to calculate the maximum demand, which means you need to calculate the KVAs. KVAs are what it is S. And I told you to calculate the total S, you need the P total plus the Q total whole squared under the root right yes similarly then for the next part you need the uh, energy units so for energy units you again need what e is equal to load factor is not mentioned so you will just go for the maximum demand which would be a total connected load multiplied by the time is given right yes now how do you do this so you go for the power triangle again you know this is your p this is your q and this one is your s so we have sine of phi if this is phi so q upon s cos of phi p by s and tangent of phi a q by p right yes so these are the definitions so let's get going let's get going first of all but the bhps are what they are the output of the motor so you have to we need the input of the motors right so that you need to convert and also you need to convert them into kilowatts so the output power the output power in kilowatts for the induction motor would be 100 multiply 0.746 i believe it is 100 multiply 0.746 uh, or first let's say okay I've just written it directly uh, yes so this is 74.6 this would be 
0.6 this is for what this is for the induction motor now the input power the input power or i will just write it as pi for the induction motor this would be what this would be this 74.6 divided by the efficiency which would be 0.85 and this comes out to be 87.6 kilowatts 87.6 kilowatt so let's do it for each individually let's say this is for the induction motor first so you find out p for the induction motor now the q for the induction motor would be what q and p have a relation q is equal to p times tangent of phi so p times 87.6 times tangent of phi and phi is the angle which is caused inverse of 0 0.75 right yes so from here what does it come out to be this angle is basically 41.4 degrees so q comes out to be what q comes out to be uh, okay where is it q is this one uh, uh 117 uh no i've just made a mistake over here i've just made a mistake over here this is fine I don't have a mistake this is fine so this would be 77 kvars 77 kvars or if you don't want to use the tangent so you can also have this to the formula s so s is uh, what is s over here so s could be this p upon the power factor again so s you can calculate from here si would be p upon the power factor cause of phi right so p is 87.6 divide it by 0 0.75 and this comes out to be what this comes out to be 117 117 kv is so you've got your p you've got your q and you've got your s so you can you can have calculated q by s sine of phi also where phi is 41.4 degrees so this is for the induction motor right this is part number this is for a load for b load similarly you have the in in, in the horsepowers what do you have the output would be 50 multiply 0 0.746 this would give you what uh, this would give you the uh, the input so what does this come out to be 50 multiplied by 0 0.746 is 37.3 kilowatts 37.3 kilowatts now the power input would be 37.3 divided by uh, what divided by the efficiency would be 0 0.95 so this comes out to be what 39.26 uh, kilowatts 39.26 kilowatts have a look so you've got the p for the synchronous motor similarly now you can have the s for the synchronous motor which would be p 39.26 upon cos of phi which is 0 0.8 leading so s comes out to be what 49 kvs 49 kvs and then q is equal to s times sine of phi so s is 49 and sine of and the angle is cos inverse of 0 0.8 so you've got the q for the synchronous motor which is what which is going to be uh, where is it 29.4 kvars 29.4 kvars 29.4 kvars have a look this would be leading and the previous one would be lagging fine so you've got this now for number c for number c what do you have this is just a miscellaneous load so this is basically the connected load so the maximum demand pc i would write this would be the connected load that is 12.5 multiplied with 0 0.8 which is the demand factor so this comes out to be 10 kilowatts 10 kilowatts and this would be equal to SC uh, also, which would be 10 kVAs and Q3 would be 0, Q3 or QC, whatever you call it to be. So from here, you can write your P total. P total would be what? Uh, P total would be uh, PI for the induction motor plus PS for the synchronous motor and PC for the miscellaneous loads. PI, PS, PC. Add them up. This comes out to be 137 kilowatts. 137 kilowatts. So put it over here. 137 squared plus. Now Q total. Q total is what? This is over here. Have a look. Uh, where is it with the lagging sign this would be with a uh, plus j and then you have a minus j over here 
the, the lagging sign would be with a plus j right 77 and then with a minus j would be with the leading minus j 29.4 so the equivalent is a plus j and that is 47.8 47.8 so which means this is leading kvrs again so put it over here 47.8 squared under the root so this implies you get the total uh, kvas are 145 145 so which means the fixed cost or the first part of the tariff is 145 multiplied by 3000 whatever this comes out to be this is 435000 435000 rupees so this is the fixed cost now you need the energy charges so the energy charges are the power you have is the p total is 137 multiplied by the time is mentioned over here is 2000 do this I don't uh, 274 triple zero 274 triple zero kilowatt hours so now which means the variable cost or the energy charges would be based on this 274 triple zero multiplied by 20 write down whatever this comes out to be I have not mentioned it over here just let me check please uh, 137.02 Yes, multiply 2000. So this is 274040. 274040. Uh, this is 27. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Just I mean, whatever this was, just let it, just let it be. So the energy requirement, the variable cost is this. This is 274040. Okay, 4040 just whatever it is do the calculation the variable cost comes out to be five four eight zero eight double zero rupees so which means the total cost the the total cost annual bill uh, 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 annual bill or the total cost would be this fixed cost plus the variable cost what is this please five nine one six five nine one six two eight zero two eight zero this is for this case number one this is the total cost per annum next what do i do is i will go for the question number b or let's say i just name it as part one part two and part three so that we don't confuse it with that abc now in part two what do i have is i would adjust my synchronous motor to operate at 0.9 leading by changing the field current of the synchronous motor we can change the over excitation and changing the over excitation of the synchronous motor means you are changing the power factor so we've changed the power factor we have over excited it to 0.9 leading so for case number a the calculation would remain the same for the induction motor the load would remain the same the calculations right uh, which means the p for the induction motor q for the induction motor s for the induction motor would remain the same then for part c the p for part c the q for part c the s for part c would remain the same we would only have to do changes in the synchronous motor part right yes the input is again the same the input of for the synchronous motor would be the same write down part b please so the in the p for the synchronous motor would be the same which would be 39.26 right but have a look this time s which is p upon the power factor would now be 0.9 so have a look this would get changed this would get changed uh, yes this would get changed of course so kvas would be 43.62 now 43.62 right yes now what do you have so i would just name it over here as s2 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 right yes so and and then finally q would be s times 43.62 times sine of the angle cos inverse of 0 0.9 this time so have a look what does this come out to be uh, this is 18.98 kvrs 18.98 kvars leading or you can also mention it with a negative sign negative j 18.98 kvrs now you don't need to write the leading or lagging now the s total which is p total squared plus q total squared would change why because the p total in the q total will change so p total now in this case 2 would be what would be this 
uh, uh, P total would remain the same. P total would remain the same. P total for part 2 would be the same as P total for part 1 which is 137. Which is 137, right? 137. So I will write over here 137 whole squared plus Q total will change. Q total will change. So have a look. Q total would be now what? This was lagging wars over here. So you have 77 with a plus sign plus J77 and then minus for this one is J18. So the net wars are again lagging. And this would be what? Uh, this would be what? Where, where is it? Where is it? 58.39. This comes out to be positive J58.39. So put it over here 58.39 whole squared under the root. So the total KVAs have changed. Where is it? 148.94, 148.94. Now have a look, the fixed cost 2, that would be based on this 148.94 multiplied with 3000. What does this come out to be? Uh, 446820, 446820 rupees, which was previously this much. 446820. To zero it has increased right yes the variable cost 2 would be the same as variable cost 1 because it is depending on the energy content and that is remaining the same so have a look I would just write the total cost of electricity 2 which would be fixed cost 2 plus variable cost 2 this comes out to be 5927 5927 620 rupees so this is for case number 2 when you have over excited the machine this was for case number one when it was for uh, so have a look the price has increased a little right yes then what do you have now for case number three now let let you do it by yourself or let us do it together now the synchronous motor is a little under excited to operate at 0.7 leading to operate at 0.7 leading this time so what do you have is again the p total remains the same s total would be p total squared plus q total squared under the root p total would be the same right plus you need the q total right why because over here the synchronous part 3 would again be different s for part 3 would be different for the synchronous machine now this would be 39.26 which is the input power now divided by 0.7 over here what would be the case? What would be the case? Uh, with this would be 56.08 kVs. 56.08 kVs. Now, uh, you know, the, the for the first and the third load, the conditions are the same because their power factor has not changed. Power factor has changed only for synchronous motor. So that is why the kVs have changed. Have a look. From here, calculate the value of Q, Q3. This would be what 56.08 times sine of what angle? Sine of the angle of cause inverse of 0.7. So Q this time the reactive power is 31.11. 31.11 kvars uh, leading or you could also have a negative J 31.11 kvars. Fine. Yes. Now again please do it. Please do it. P total is the same. So Q total would be what? You have a plus J 77 point uh, whatever it is. I don't have a point, right? And then you have a minus J 31.11. So the net KVARs come out to be what? 46.26. Uh, 46.26. Have a look with a plus J sign. This means these are uh, uh, lagging, lagging. These are lagging. These are lagging. So put them over here 46.26 squared. So the total KVAs come out to be what? The total KVAs are 144.6. 144.6. 144.6 VAs are the total KVAs. Now what do you have is you have the fixed charges or the fixed cost or the first part of the tariff. So that is based on the KVAs. So what are the KVAs? Uh, 144.6. 144.6 multiply it with 3000. So what do you have is what do I get over here is 433800. 433800. 
this is fixed cost for case number three the variable cost for case number three would be the same as variable cost for case number two the same for variable cost number one why because it depends on the energy content and the energy content has not changed because we are not changing the load factor or things like that so that is the same right yes which is what which is mentioned over here five four eight zero eight double zero whatever it is right yes 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 five four this is what five four eight zero eight double zero rupees so which means the total cost of electricity three in the third case comes out to be you add them up five nine one four five nine one four six double zero five nine one four six double zero rupees we are changing the excitation of the what the synchronous machine so we are playing with the power factor and with that the kvas are changing and with that the cost is changing so have a look you note the difference five nine one six that is five nine two seven this is five nine one four minimum for case number three for the minimum power factor 0.7 maximum for case number two for the maximum power factor 0.9 average cost in between the two for the in between the two power factor of 0.8 which means play around the power factor the kva changes but the cost changes as well so which means you have to look into your pocket you have to look into your pocket for whatever you are going right so it, it is not like that you say that higher the power factor the higher it is good you know just take it to unity take it to unity no that is not the case you have to look into the pocket you have to look for the budget as well this is costing you more rupees right yes so you have to look for what as an operation engineer your thing should be cost effective the objective is cost effectiveness this is not only technical thing you find you just take you say that power factor of unity is the best power factor just consider it to be unity and do the calculation this much of kvr capacitance is required just install it and this and that but where will the money come from where will the money come from right yes so you have to think about this how to think about this so we'll see the next video for that where we discuss the most economical power factor for us what would be the best power factor in our budget so stay tuned for the next video i will see you there very soon till then take care of yourselves everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye